Welcome back to a new video about MOSFET differential amplifiers. This is our example number two where we discuss the MOSFET differential pairs. In this case we will use the resistive current source here as the realization of our current source for the tail current required for this MOSFET differential pair. We will see now a step-by-step -step calculations and also verify these in SPI simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the circuit with the two DC volt sources, VDD and VSS. The values are shown here. And we have two resistors here, which are equal RD, RD, drain resistor. We have two N-channel enhancement MOSFET, which have, uh, both of them are matched, so M1 is equal to M2. And they have the threshold voltage of two volts, conduction parameter of two, 25 milliamps per square volt. And the channel length modulation is zero, so lambda is zero. Now we would like to calculate the balanced differential mode voltage gain and then also the balance, the common mode voltage gain and then so compare them together as a ratio for common mode reduction ratio as the final step. So our first step is the calculations. First let's also check that what we have as the currents. This is the current IS1 which is the source current for the M1. This is the source current for M2. And there's also a tail current here which is IQ flowing through RQ. Now, since the gate currents are zero, because this is a sort of a capacitor for the MOSFET, then the ID1 is equal to IS1 and ID2 will be equal to IS2. Okay. But since also the VGS, so VGS, gate to source voltages, for each of the transistors are exact same, because they are at the same potential here at DC, so we can say this is also the same, let's designate that as or define it as VGS without this 1 or 2. Now, we can now use Kirchhoff's voltage law, beginning at this node, all the way to ground, because at DC the VID is this is an AC voltage source so that will be grounded. Or we can start here and then make the loop complete. That is then this one, because we have the VGS plus RQ times IQ, that is then the Ohm's law, and plus VSS, that will be add up to zero. Now, we know that IQ will split in two equal parts for IS1 and IS2. But since IS1 is equal to ID1 and IS2 is equal to ID2, we can say that IQ is just a double of the ID1 or the double of the IQ2, ID2. That's actually shown here. Now we can now also set up an equation for the drain current. Doesn't matter for M1 or M2. Assuming the saturation region of operation, so we can say the ID1 is given by this expression where you see the conduction parameter the gate to source voltage and also the threshold voltage and quantity here is in squared. This is only valid when you have saturation region of operation and also channel length modulation is zero. Okay, now taking this together in the format that we have ID1 in here and then two times that will be the IQ and also substitute in here, you get this expression. Now we can now solve this. Uh, let's first substitute the values we have. We have the RQ, we have the KN, we have the threshold voltage also. So let me, this is not a substitute yet, but we will do that shortly. And also VSS is minus 20. Now this is here and this together all the way in these three parameters as a product will give you 445. Now this minus 20 will be then placed to the right hand side will be plus 20. Now we have now an expression which is just uh, an expression we can solve using a solver. Now we can also work it out and then uh, do it manually. That's also possible, but if you solve this, which is really straightforward uh, calculation using a graphing calculator, that will give you one option is 1.798 volts or exactly 2.2 volts. But which one of, of these two uh, is valid? Now we need to have, if you use this formula for drain current, you need to have that the gate to source voltage must be larger than the threshold voltage which is 2 volts. So in this case this is a little smaller than the threshold voltages but this is larger than the threshold voltage of 2 volts. So that means this is invalid, mathematically correct but invalid in practice and this is valid. So we go for VGS is 2.2 volts. Now when you have calculated nowadays you can now use the formula for ID1 which is also the same as ID2 since this is a symmetric circuit. That will give you ID1 is equal to 0 0.025 times 2.2 2 minus 2, which is then this 2.2. So you will get now exactly 1 milliamp. That means we have here a current flowing here 1 milliamp. It's also here. That means the IQ will be 2 milliamps. That is actually also the uh, conclusion here. Now, 
as said before, M1 and M2 are matched and bias at the same potential, that is because of the gate source voltages. And we have then the transconduction or conductance of M1, which is GM1, will be the same as the transconductance GM2 F of M2. That is only where they have the same drain current. And also the parameters like the Kn, etc. Now we define GM is equal to the GM1 is equal to GM2 because we just name one GM without any numbers as we did for the VGS. Then we can calculate the GM for the N channel enhancement MOSFET with using this formula, which is then two times the square root of the conduction parameter times drain current. Now, then we have the following situation. If you now use the KN given and also just the ID1 calculated, we have now 0 0.010 Siemens or 10 millisiemens. Now, let's continue with the further calculations with the balance differential mode voltage gain. Because we have the GM, which is required for our voltage gains, we have the VOD over VID, which is our differential mode balance uh, gain, which will be the minus GM times RD. We have GM, we have already given the ID, RD, so we have here 0 0.01 times 10 to the power 4 will give you minus 100. The balance common mode voltage gain will be given by this expression, which is that single ended output. I start with this one because you can measure that this node or that node that will be exactly equal to each other. Why? Because you connect the two gates together and then apply a VIC, which is the input common mode signal. And that means that the VO1 and VO2, since they are, these are equal to each other, that is defined as the common mode output voltage. And that is then also the balanced common mode voltage gain, which is equal to the single-ended common mode voltage gain. And that's shown here, again, a minus sign. In this case, you see the RQ here, which is in this case 8.9 kilo ohms. So we will use that here. And we know GM, we know RD. Let's substitute everything in here. And you will get now here minus 0 0.55 eight seven so approximately 0 0.56 minus 0 0.56 okay now we have the necessary information we now do the balance common mode rejection ratio also which is given by the, uh, this expression as an absolute value the differential mode voltage gain over the common mode voltage gain we know minus 100 we know the common mode gain which is calculated will give you 179 and in dbs will be then 45.06 dbs the higher this value the better it is. So that means the lower the common mode rejection rate, the common mode gain, the better this or the ratio between the differential mode gain and the common mode gain. That is actually what is really the required specification. Now looking now at the simulation results for the DC analysis, this is for the differential mode, this is now for the common mode circuit. Now you see that indeed there's one milliamp here for ID1 and ID2 and you also see that for the Common mode uh, circuit, so we have indeed verified our calculation here for the drain current, so we can say this is checked. Let's also look at the transient response, because now we also need to check the gains. This, we have a couple of uh, plots here, so we have the blue one, which is our VID, 10 millivolts peak with a 1 kilohertz uh, frequency. And we see here the differential mode input voltage, uh, and we see here in red the differential mode output voltage which is inverted you see that it's 180 degrees out of phase and the peak peak value here is so the peak value is approximately one volt so you see here 999.55 millivolts so let's say approximately one volt so the peak peak value is approximately two volts and the peak peak here is 20 millivolts so that will give you minus 100 so we can say this is also checked because we have calculated minus 100. let's also do the common mode uh, circuit because this is the common mode circuit and now the also the same uh, analysis this is the common mode input voltage in this case we increase it from 10 millivolts all the way to 5 so some uh, larger value in order to see the differences in the output more clearly so we get 5 volts peak again the same frequency 1 kilohertz so it's 10 volts peak peak and the output VO1 and VO2 it doesn't matter they are in phase so VO1 and VO2 are in phase but they are out of phase with the common mode input voltage and that's why we have this minus sign here what do we see we see that the VO1 has a peak peak value or VO2 that doesn't matter we can see that VO2 has a peak peak value of 5.58 and we have a peak peak value for the input common mode voltage of 10 volts so we can say minus 0 0.558 which is very close to what we have calculated so we can also say this is checked 
Now we see that the calculations do match very well with the simulation results we have seen. And what also in, in, import, the important part in here is, compared to the first example with the, the MOSFET differential pair, that the common mode gain is not zero anymore because we used here a simple resistor. Now we will see in the next uh, videos, we will use the more advanced current sources there to increase the common mode direction ratio or thereby decreasing the common mode gain. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.